Warning! This podcast contains... What's up, everyone, and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Legends of Tomorrow, Season 3, Episode 5, Return of the Mac. I'm your host, Dom. Joining me is Nikki. And, and Rachel. And, uh, oh, okay. No, he didn't. How's it going? He didn't have the names ready. You were not prepared. I'm, I'm always prepared. How's it going? What'd you guys think of this episode? I was I was just as disappointed uh, as Mick when there wasn't an actual fucking vampire. <laughs> I was like, I Mick was like ah, and I was like ah at the same time because I wanted there to be a vampire. Mm. Right. I mean, he was well, reading Dracula and everything. He yeah, he was. Really fu- that was a thick right. book. He read it really fucking fast. He's like, shut up, guys. I have one more page left. Like, <laughs> I know. Whatever. He's like. Well, he's like doing he's doing research. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, Nate was also a little um, disappointed too. Yeah, he, he went from terrified that he was going to get bit by a vampire to completely disgust. This guy was coming at him with like a dual syringe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> like either way, you're getting punctured. That's not going to be fun. <laughs> well, yeah. the episode took place in uh, 1895 London. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is very Jack the Rippery. Um, yeah, I well, did. it's about the time. It's that that's around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jack the Ripper was year. was more like eighty eight. I think it was eighteen eighty eight. Um, but I I think like I don't know. I, there were some reports of it a what? little after, but it, they don't really go as deep as as eighteen ninety five. So. I really thought that they were t- making Jack the Ripper the vampire. That's yeah, that's what I thought. That's I was I'm sitting there going, I, I but that's not even the first time the we've dealt with vampire and and mm-hmm. Ripper like Jack the Ripper. I think there's at least three different incarnations, not even counting legends, of mm-hmm. um, sci-fi shows turning Jack the Ripper into a vampire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's at least three that I know of. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, they did mention him. Mm-hmm. They did, yeah. So, the reason why I they don't that, they though. don't know exactly when he started. They don't know exactly when he stopped either. I mean, there's also um, lore that he actually moved from from London. He took a boat America. over to America, and yeah. the, there was murders kind of like that that started yeah. was started here in America. So they don't know. And also, there is another theory that there that the Ripper was actually a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's that's also why I thought that they were going the Jack the Ripper route because the opening scene is a lady walking down an alley, yeah. and we knew that we know. Well, we we assume from all the history records and all that stuff that Jack the Ripper targeted prostitutes. Right. I mean, so I'm looking up right now, Jack the Ripper. There's only five known victims, uh, and they spanned from 1888 to 1891. So it didn't quite extend to 1895, but it's That's still no. fresh. <laughs> it's still fresh in their minds that they would associate yeah. a murder like this to Jack the Ripper. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but then then we get Rip Hunter, uh, you know, finding the uh, walking the the girl down the, you know the alley like chasing after, her, and that's when he finds the body. And I'm sitting there going, wait, is Rip Hunter? Jack the Ripper, like oh, Ripper, God. Rip, like that's where my head started going. But then he's like investigating the body and he's like, oh, I was completely drained of blood and it must have been done off site. And he's doing like, so I'm like, okay, maybe it's not him, but I don't know because there's time travel aspects of the show and maybe it's, you know, an, an anachronism version of Rip Hunter. Like, I didn't know what was going on with this story at this point, but. Yeah. Um, I do love the fact that he told her in another time she would have been a really good screen. Yeah. Like a scream queen kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have a really good scream. That's yeah. like, what a thing to compliment someone on. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's typical, you know, it's like legends for them to kind of break the fourth wall in that, that uh, department. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so the, uh, the legends come down to investigate the body. Uh, they're talking to the coroner, um, and he has a watch from the future. And, uh, 
I want to raise inventions. Raise. Yep. Yeah. Like, that is a no, no, no. He just rambled off. Yeah. Like, dude, wow. So Great tech bullshit. Like, mm-hmm. nah. okay. They, t- <laughs> they take the watch and they um, examine it for fingerprints, and you know it comes up with uh, the coroner's. It comes up with. Uh, was it, was it Ray who handled it? Mm-hmm. I didn't know if it was Ray or Jax. It comes up with Ray's fingerprints. Um, and then a third party, which was Oliver Queen, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a fourth unknown. Uh, and I'm sitting there going, oh, wow, they're really dipping into... This, uh, they're, really t- they're really getting them tied in. Yeah. So, this, this I, I, I don't know what's happening <clears throat> over on Arrow other than I know that... This, they, this has nothing to do with current nothing. Arrow. Nothing. There's nothing, nothing over there, yeah. over there right now. What this has it. to no. do with is Damien Dark, uh, which mm-hmm. we learned this is Damien Dark's watch, right? Damien Dark and Oliver had a history, was it two seasons ago? No? Yeah. Two seasons ago on Arrow. Um, you know, they they uh, mm-hmm. they were villains. So this, this Damien Dark right here is immediately after Arrow uh, okay. from two seasons ago. Um, unlike the Damien Dark that we dealt with last season was taken from before that somewhere, you know, in the, um, the past, he was then brought around, you know, and stuff like that. So after he was returned to his timeline, he then went on to go do all the stuff with Oliver was then killed. And now we're left with this. So, okay. So that's, that's where I went. Like when I first saw the body in the casket, I wasn't thinking Damien Dark. I thought somehow they're going to resurrect Oliver. Mm. Because I don't know what's what happened over there. I just know that Oliver has now been since dead for a while. So it's like, oh, well, they found Oliver's prince. And then later they reveal, oh, Damien Dark. And I'm like, oh, Oliver's still alive and kicking. Uh, Yeah, Oliver's still alive. Well, I asked you guys, I don't know who I asked. Somebody. In this podcast, in the other podcast, what happened if uh, Oliver was... I was like, so Oliver's dead? And you're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. That must have been Dom pulling it your leg because... It wasn't me. That. I can't remember what podcast it was. It was in the last week or two. Mm-hmm. And someone said, when I asked, so Oliver's dead. Somebody said, oh, yeah, yeah. So wasn't it me. Was probably- um, Oliver stepped down as the Green Arrow. The Green Arrow. He's playing I, I know, mayor full yeah. time. Okay. So that's yeah. I also knew that Diggle was the new Green Arrow, but yeah, that's that's really all that's going on over there. But, um, but yeah, so revealed that uh, Damian Dark uh, is is uh, in a glass coffin, mm-hmm. and we get word uh, from Rip that uh, this could be the work of Malice, someone he's been chasing for five years. Uh, basically, call refers to him as a phantom. Um, and uh, he calls on the legends uh, in exchange for some help. I think it's very complicated right now. Oh, it's and very, very complicated. It's uh, it's so so complicated. And Rip, I think right now he he wants to explain everything, but he doesn't have time to explain everything. As we could see, everything moved really fast. It was just like he's, he's a time traveler that doesn't have time. That's true. He does exactly. I don't have time to tell you. Why there's no time to tell you why. <laughs> uh, he had time. He has all the time. If he, in the world. If he had time to go in and, and plan all this other shit after asking the legends for their help, he had time to sit there and tell them this is what malice is and this is how important it is. Because obviously the crew of the legends was like, You're full of shit. One because they don't trust him, and two because it seems it, you know, it's it's there. He's not taking the time to tell them, so he obviously well, doesn't trust them just as much as they don't trust him. The only reason why they agreed to work with them is Sarah cut a deal that would get the time bureau off their back. So that that's why they reluctantly agreed to help him. Um, and then, uh, you know, we find out Nate stayed up all night and he found a pattern to the uh, anachronisms. He was drinking coffee. <laughs> oh my god, Nate. Okay, the last few episodes he's been drunk very drunk he's been extremely high off of some crazy route and now he's high on caffeine like we've gotten like a whole array array of varieties and of nate and it's just like this guy knows how to act all the different things like it's just been 
I know, like, the first couple episodes, I was complaining about Nate being so stuck up and arrogant and whatever. Mm -hmm. And the last couple episodes, I've been very entertained, so. Yeah, Yeah, he's fantastic. But they decide to use Nate as vampire bait because they believe this is the vampire. He's sexy. (laughs) I see the the way I figured is they were using him as vampire bait because he could turn to steel, you know. No, they and... they got him because he's a pretty boy. Mm-hmm. Mick just... even said it; he's pretty. No, I know. I just figured it was because you know he could turn to steel and you know break the vampire's teeth when the vampire tried to bite him. That, that's Maybe. that's where I was going for, but you know clearly they had different uh, reasons. Um, and uh, then all of a sudden. It looks as if Professor Stein from another era takes him, which That's ends what up I thought. Uh, being great great grandfather Sir Henry Stein. He's an actor. He is. Now, now Stein knows gonna crap my ancestors were nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he's heard of he's heard of them actually, obviously, but I don't yeah. think he now he knows. Now he knows. He's like he's just a little crazy. <laughs> so, he didn't know his great great grandpa was part of an occult kind of scene. Yeah, no. <laughs> So while Nate is captured, he's talking to them, and he's, he's like, I see a, a painting of a red moon uh, in this, this office and stuff that I'm in. So um, he says, uh, the Order of the Shrouded Compass uh, has some information about a red moon. Uh, beware the red moon. Uh, basically, it, it, sep- a door, it opens a door that separates death from life. So... I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't think this is the last that we've heard of, of the Order of the Shrouded Compass. I think this is oh, just no, the precursor. Um, I think it has a lot to do with Malice. So if we're getting more of Malice, we're going to get more of that, uh, that, that yeah. group of peoples. Yeah. And then that's when they come across the body in the coffin is actually Damien Dark. And apparently Malice needs him for some kind of plan. Some, something to resurrect him for. They could have took Mick's stake and just it eh, right then and there. Mm-hmm. I, I have a question. Yes. Was Damien Dark always able to just toss people around like yes. rag dolls? Yes. Okay. He had magic. Okay. Yes. He's what introduced magic to Arrow. Arrowverse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, um, but Rip and Sarah kind of have this argument over whether or not they should let Dark get resurrected. And, uh, Rip's like, all right, Sarah, you're right, you're right, you're right. She, he just kind of like feeds into it, and then he traps them all on the ship with uh, the gentleman's dreadnought code or whatever that uh, locked up the ship so it couldn't be open, and Gideon wouldn't open the door for anybody. I was like, but they could fly, but they just can't open the door. But I'm like, yeah, they couldn't. Really? They I'm like, leave. Rip, you after everything, you're gonna do this to the team. And that's why they were so apprehensive in the first place to trust him because they knew some way down the road he was going to fuck them over. What did he do? Exactly in the same goddamn episode, not even 30 minutes after he's like, yeah, you can trust me. There you go. He's, he's there is a reason. There's something There's something else going on he's not telling it, and he should tell them because not only is he seems like he's going against the Time Bureau. Mm. That's what it seems like right now. So, it is. He so, suspended. So there's something going on, and he, he needs to do this, and he needs to do it fast, it seems like. Yeah. It seems like he's going too fast. Like, he should really slow down and explain it and maybe seems, think about things. And it seems like and Vandal just, Savage all over again. It really does. You know, like, with, with Rip, personally. I'm not saying that Malice is mm. anything to do with Vandal Savage, but Malice, he, he's handling Malice the same way he handled Vandal. You know, it's just like... He jumps in, takes the opportunity at first, but, you know, as it went on, he learned, okay, well, we only get, you know, so many shots at this, you know, you know, it took time, but he got there. And, um, uh, and, call, and Sarah called him out on the ship. She's like, you know, you don't trust anyone. You still don't trust anyone. That's why you feel like you have to do it by yourself. Yeah. And she's right. And, but luckily yeah. Sarah had the, the wherewithal to, uh, find a way off the ship, you know, by, uh, Looping some, looping some missiles around and then flying in the, the path of their trajectory uh, to blow a hole in the side of the ship so they could escape. And had she had not done that, Rip would be dead. He would. Well, I mean, I would have said let it happen, but both Nate and Zari were still down there. So, 
Or no, they saved Nate. Zari was down there. She decided. Zari to, was there. She yeah. decided to take a step off the ship before yeah, all that shit it. went down. But yeah, if she wasn't down there, I would have said, "Let it happen. Just let it happen. Yeah. Let him die because he's being stupid, like usual." Yep. Um, but with this, we get Damien Dark. He does resurrect, uh, mm-hmm. and as as Omi mentioned, he's got his powers and he's throwing people around and 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 all kinds of stuff. Um, but, uh, what, what was up with that, uh, fight scene? You for... Of all the songs for him to choose. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. I wonder if that was an actor's choice. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like he, as the actor, would have been like, yes, I want this song, please. Right. Write this in because like, I'm coming back. Who you know? does a fight scene to Return of the Mac? Damien Dark. Da- Damien Dark. I don't. I mean, we first heard it when the you know the mortician had it when right. all of a sudden it started going up. They're like, "That is not from this era." That is. He's just like, "No, you're talking about that." I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's finest cool. time piece like I've ever it. had. He's, he's like a little kid. It's shiny. Yeah. I mean, that song came out in like '96, I think it was, and it took like half a year, or maybe even a full year. I don't. It took a, about a year for the song to to get popular, and there was only one song that was more popular than it. You guys have any clue what that is? '96. 90, it was 97, 97. Was it 97? Oh, 97, that's well, definitely said about not. a year later. Do you, do you oh, 97. Clue? I was... Okay, 97, depending on what At time, the time of the year. Only one I, song more popular. I was either 19 or 20. Okay, so... so was so it a Backstreet Boys song? Close. 98 <laughs> Degrees and Sync? No. Nope. Bye, bye, bye. No, no, no. I don't know. I was Bop. Hanson, yes, <laughs> yes. So. I was going to like Green Day, Everclear. Concert, oh yeah, so, oh yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I did. <laughs> this is the stuff that was on our uh, our pop station, you know. Here, mm-hmm. not you know. I didn't listen I to just, that very often, but you know, it was I whenever I was in the car with my parents, that's what would be playing. Oh, I was alternative grunge, living in Northwest. Grunge was a way of life. Yeah, uh, Hanson knows the shit. Just saying. I mean, was shit. No, my. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to their CD Took the words all right out of the your time. Mouth. <laughs> was was shit. I <laughs> didn't listen to Mbop though. I didn't like that particular song. The only song other... that anybody liked. Nobody listened to the whole CD, obviously, because there was other Wait, songs on CD? there that were better. Yes. Oh, I didn't even know that. Saying I'm pretty, oh so pretty. <laughs> Oh, let's, let's they look like girls. Are they the ones that sang the I Want Candy? No. 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 Original was Bow Wow, but... Well, yeah, no. I know that. I the, I meant the cover that was popular around that no. show. No, um, it was just... It was the most ridiculous fight scene I've ever seen. And I loved every second of it. It, it was, was amazing. It oh, brought me back it, to, like, how, like, two episodes ago on, on Supergirl, you know, we had Britney Spears playing. You know, it was just like... No, that was super duper lame. I'm sorry, I could not take that. This was uh, actually choreographed, and it was brilliant. <laughs> I did love when they froze everything, and then you could see like the blood spatter oh, and carefully. everything. Mm. It was really, really awesome. Rip, where did this fucking device come from? Why don't you use it more often? Why don't the Legends fucking have it? Like, seriously, what the fuck? I bet it's his own personal stash. Because he, I, I bet you he has this his own is why I stuff. fucking hate his guts. I can't stand Rip because he's an arrogant, selfish bastard. Mm. Red Bandit uh, in chat just said Aaron Carter was the one who sang "I Want Candy." I remember oh, that. God. Uh, now I remember. I remember. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Thank you, he, Red he Bandit. Talk, he was just talking about meth at the time. <laughs> Probably. So. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I don't- uh, we also got to meet um, famed mystic Madam Eleanor. From Crazy Bitch. I was like, Kelly, what are you doing? Because <laughs> she's from, she played another character on Supernatural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I saw her face, I was like, 
So that, you didn't... Wasn't she also in The Vampire Diaries? She, yes. Yeah. That's, she, yes. I wasn't even thinking of her from Supernatural. Um, I was thinking of her from Vampire Diaries. Well, I mean, Supernatural is the most recent thing. Like, literally this week, she was in an episode. So yeah. it was fresh in my head. Yeah. There's something, I, there's a connection with her. And it has to be that that's her great grandma or something. Because not no one can work the Emma, but people in her family, it seems like. Yeah, it, it seemed like that. Hmm. You know, I don't know. But yeah. Why is it that, like, all the older totem users go dark side? Because mm-hmm. they have cookies? Cookies would make me happy and go good side. Come to the dark side, we got cookies. Mm. We got punch and pie, too. Ah, see, I knew I knew her for something even more recent. I just had to look her up. Uh, the actress who played her is uh, Courtney Ford. Um, and uh, not only did she play uh, Kelly, uh, she played uh, Vanessa from one episode of The Vampire Diaries. Um but even more recent than that, because I've been rewatching the series before it leaves Netflix, she played Vicky on How I Met Your Mother uh, in the episode The Naked Man. Very, very oh. famous episode. So okay. that's that's definitely why she was so prominent in my head. But yeah. Um, I really like her as an actress. Oh, she's not fantastic. Only, she's not only is she talented, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So like... Especially in this particular episode, like her hair and just like it just I don't know. She was like entrancing. Maybe that's why she is but, She was like, also that's... she played uh Christine Hill in uh Dexter. So yeah. Yeah. Oh Yeah, see. She played the... oh! Yeah. She's been in a lot. She was on True Blood, she played uh uh Portia Bellefleur. Oh my god. She's been in a lot of things. She played uh character Alice on the Big Bang Theory. Uh She's she's been on a lot of stuff. She was on an episode of Castle, uh, Human Target. She was on for an episode Criminal Minds. She's been on a lot, a lot of stuff, Monk. So, well, I hope that she found her niche in Legends because seems like she's been doing good with the CW because she's been jumping around to a bunch of their their shows and stuff like that. So she just needs to find the right family for her to stay in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like this is this is it, at least for this season anyways. Yeah, I hope I hope she's a reoccurring for this season because I, I did like her. Um she acted as a conduit for the dead here and I think mm-hmm. this would be a good way to tie in Constantine. Because we do know Constantine is coming this season to Legends. Um right. and he deals See, with the supernatural and stuff, so the reason why I think that she's related to her in some way or passing because she knew Right, she knew what that was, and she knew how to get to her. Yep. And on Zari's part, she needs to just open up just a little bit because, you know, she was like, oh, how, you know, the feeling of not being able to go back and save your family, you know, save your brother. How about that? And Sarah's like, how about going back and saving your sister? Mm. Yeah, I mean, her sister she, died she's, twice. Yeah, she's acting like she kind of is acting like these people are perfect, and that nothing bad has ever happened to them it's like if you talked to them you would know their stories and you would know that they are flawed they have things they have they have things they want to go back in time to fix but they can't yeah even even mick wants to go back in time and fix things that's why sarah even said you know like like my dead sister you know like Mm -hmm. you know so she's and then even and and then with um god what's her name Amaya. How, Amaya. Even with Amaya, she's like, Amaya's wanting to talk to her, wants to get to know her, wants to figure out what's going on. She's just like blowing her off the whole entire time. Yeah. I'm like, listen here. Yeah. To be fair, she's probably only still been in part of the team for like a little over a week. All of this shit is happening really fast. It's overwhelming. I mean, she didn't even know that there was time traveling, you know? Yeah. But also, I mean, just to fall into that whole, the whole, uh, this lady can talk to the dead kind of thing. And mm-hmm. it's like, you're really, you're going to fall for that. You're going to go in without telling anyone you're going to be, you know, without, that's just, it's ridiculous. And give over something that was so precious to you. Yeah. I don't She's I making stupid like, decisions I too. I feel like Zari at that point felt that the amulet was more of a hindrance than a help. So that's why she was so willing to just like hand it over. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It's true. But she needs to talk to Maya more. I mean, Maya's trying to. And Maya's not being forceful or anything. She's just easing not, her. She's, she's letting her come to her almost, but by going to her. Does that, but I mean, she's not knocking. No, right. she's not knocking. Well, that, that's, she did that's kind knock. of that's kind of impeding on, on personal space. So she is kind of forcing herself a little bit. But no, you're... I mean, if she did it, it, she would never. It would never happen. Oh, I know. So it's already came around near the end. But I just want to ask a question. While everybody else was eating their normal basic food like grapefruit and oatmeal, <laughs> what the fuck was Zari eating? Was it like a mishmash of like ice cream and cake and whatever? It I looked don't like know. some I... kind of uh, pancakes. Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that her food look, looked delicious. And when they mentioned just like, you know, grapefruit, what, okay, I'll eat it, whatever. But like when Sarah came around with her fucking oatmeal, I was like, what? When you <laughs> tasted so everything, you go bland. Uh, no way! If I had a choice, I'd be eating lobster and butter for yeah, every fucking meal. I don't like lobster. I mean, I would be extravagant every fucking day. Seriously, I don't care about... I mean, I might have spaghetti and meat sauce more than once in for a meal, like in a row, just because it's delicious. But if I had the chance just to make food, like conjure it, no matter like what it is, I would make sure that it's fucking awesome every time, not some goddamn oatmeal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go back to comfort foods. I like oatmeal, so. Yeah. Um... Red Band's asking, wasn't Dark's wife's name Eleanor, or was that his daughter's name? It was neither. Um, his uh, uh, his daughter's name was Nora. Um, I remember that. His wife, it was weird. It was not... It was, it was somewhere not then. Eleanor. It was like... Uh, Revo, Rev, Rev, Ravine or Revi. Rev, it started with an R. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, as far as I know, he doesn't have anybody tied to him. Uh, that's that's named uh, Eleanor, but uh, maybe maybe she's one of his descendants. I don't know, but like, she's really she's really focused on Zari's amulet. She yeah. wants she wants that, um, and uh, Zari gives it to her for you know a brief period of time until uh, she recalls the totem for herself. Yeah, that um, was awesome. It's like yeah. that's mine. <laughs> yeah, then, Oosh. that's mine. <laughs> Take my that's shit. Fun. You know, Eleanor's face uh, when she, that happened was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, <laughs> like I'm outie. <laughs> yeah, she's more powerful than she thought she was. Mm-hmm. So, when when they save Rip and bring bring him back to the ship and all that, they're talking to him, and Sarah's like, "You know, all this stuff," and he's like, well, "Do you really? You, you should know me better, man. You expect an apology?" And I'm just like, "Oh, this is gonna be bad." And she's like, "No, no. You remember that last lesson you taught me? Mm-hmm. You have nothing oh, left to teach me." You know, kind of. Yeah. What What was that, Nate? To be a cold-hearted son of a bitch. Yep. There you go. Yep. That's and, the one. And uh, we find out that Sarah called uh, her future girlfriend, uh, Agent Sharp. God, please no. <laughs> and uh, she comes in, uh, some members of the Time Bureau, and they detain Rip. Uh, and Sarah did this in exchange for letting the legends do what they're doing, uh, you know, and, and so the Time Bureau is no longer coming after the legends. Um, but um, what? The director, the other one, um, the one that detained Rip, he was on Heroes Reborn, correct? I don't remember. Like his face, I just couldn't, couldn't put it somewhere. Yeah, I'll have I to look it up. But, uh... On, uh, as they're taking Rip away, he warns Sarah that Malice is getting stronger. Um, we do know that the uh, the villain trio uh, that is coming this season, we're dealing with uh, uh, Damien Dark, Malice, and Gorilla Grodd. So, one step closer to Grodd. I was hoping, oh, I'm so happy. I was hoping we were going to get Grodd back sooner, but I think... I think Crossover. I think building it over is 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 going to be better. Like you know, giving it some time. I don't even think it's going to be the crossover. To be honest, uh, I crossover is want... dealing with a whole different plot right now. I want it to be the crossover because I want to. I, I, mean, I I I don't know how far I, I can discuss the flesh on this because I 
I know a lot of people who are watching the DC shows know that yeah, Barry hit. and Iris I'm are going to get hitched. That's mm-hmm. the plan. We, I want... we discuss the Flash okay. as long as as long as the show is already aired. It's fair game for this show. Okay, it's part so of the universe. I, I want or, Grodd awesome. to walk in with a bow tie into the wedding and be like, "What's up, bitches?" <laughs> and fuck things up. This house because... is bitching. <laughs> You're right. So, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's gonna be interesting. We're we're, we're getting Grodd sooner. Hopefully sooner than later, but yeah. he's going to be a big, big part of the season. So, uh, I really, really like Damien Dark. Um, I'm really glad that they did the uh, the resurrection thing, and I'm glad it doesn't have anything to do with the Lazarus Pit. So, mm-hmm. um, it's got me more excited that Dark may stick around for a bit more than this season, too, because if they're resurrecting him, as long as they don't kill him, we could potentially have him back. How did he get as back? As long there? as we want. How did he get back? What? How did he it get was, back to the Victorian all, times? He, it's he's in the anachronism. He he was the one that you know got shifted out of time, just like the the rest of all the things going on. Um, it was his this, dead body got shifted out of him. Um, well, it had malice. something to do with malice. what Malice was doing. Yeah. Uh, all the uh-huh. all the outlier out anachronisms are from Malice, because all the rest of them are in a pattern. Nate explained this at the beginning of the episode. It was the 1985 or 1895 one, which was the vampire, and then the other one they just took care of. They were the outliers, and those are from Malice. So Malice was the one who basically threw Damien Dark in this time so that he could be resurrected, however, which way he was resurrected with the red. They needed the blood moon. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, I just hope I don't get, I don't hope I don't get, like, bored with Damien Dark again. Uh, he got bored last season because he was with the Reverse Flash and Malcolm. He was it, kind of the, under the Reverse Flash's thumb. Like, he yeah. had to do everything he said. But with Dark in charge of things, I think it's going to be <laughs> a lot better. It, and they don't it, have it, to They don't have to fit it into a way where it's like, well, we have to be able to send him back. And we can't do anything too drastic to him uh, because time and all that. Now that this takes place after... Uh, he already dies an arrow. They could literally do anything with him and not have to worry mm-hmm. about it. So I don't know. Yeah. I have this thing that I don't like. I don't know. It's always it's been a thing with me with superhero shows. Yeah. When villains you think are dead and they keep coming back to life, it just mm, I don't know. It just grates on me. You yeah. know, after a while, you're like, stop. Just no. I just get that. Stop. I get that because it's like you know, just because somebody's dead doesn't mean you won't ever see him again, kind of deal, and that that kind of gets frustrating because you're like, well, we already defeated him; and he's back. As long as they don't do that with Vandal Savage, you know, I'll be fine. Like if if Mollus turns out to be Vandal Savage, I'm gonna be upset. Um, but at the same time, do you realize how cool and how powerful it would be to have Vandal Savage, Damian Dark, and Grodd working together? Like that's almost unstoppable. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to be that because we dealt with the whole season trying to get rid of Vandal Savage. Oh my God. So if we're not going to get him until like halfway through this season, you know, and they're able to defeat this big trio, you know, in half a season, I'm, I'm going to be disappointed. So I'm hoping that that's not the case. But I don't know. I just hope it's not. I don't know. I just, I always hate that. Even in regular shows, not just superhero. Oh, oh they're coming back. I just hate it. It's like, okay, can, we just, can someone just stay dead? Yeah. I don't care I if mean, it's a hero or a villain. Just someone stay dead, like Superman. Stay dead! <laughs> How many times have have we said that about Supernatural and the Winchesters? Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's they've gone through 13 seasons of it basically dying every fucking season and coming back. So it's it's like, you know, it, it just seems like a reoccurring theme for a lot of TV shows right now. Like, hey, here's the twist. They're back! Not actually to us, but we were expecting it. <laughs> I was but I mean, I it's wasn't like, here, expecting Damien re-gift. Dark. Let me regift your Christmas present you gave me, and then you'll regift it to me next Christmas, and I'll regift it to you the Christmas after. Yeah, um, but then okay. we also had Ray and Jack, um, right? Mm, right? Trying to break up Firestorm. Uh, Ray gave Jax a shot. Uh, <laughs> And uh, gave Jack some short-term memory loss. <laughs> I loved it. 
so hilarious. It was so funny. Wait, where, where did you come from? <laughs> Everybody looks at him like, what, what the what? <laughs> what the what? Yeah, from sperm, and then uh, you know, it's like really, we're gonna do that, Ray. Like this is where Nikki goes, uh, Ray. You are the dumbest smart person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray. We've already figured that out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was just saying. It's like no, Ray. Just stop, please. You're not making it any better. You're making it more of a target for everybody to focus on. Yeah. But I mean, their their explanation to Stein was kind of it was kind of oh temporal dysplasia. You know, well it is a thing. So, yeah, you yeah. you get short term memory loss from the temporal dysplasia of the ship jumping. So I mean that was an, a a very good explanation for what was going on with Jax. But but <laughs> Ray's just like oh crap it's getting worse. What? What I don't yeah. like if they have such a strong psychic connection, Jax and Stein. How could Stein not realize he wasn't feeling what Jax was feeling when, before, Ray even gave him the serum? Jax was like, "Yeah, last time I got laid." Stein was like, "Good job." It's like there, and I'm sure they weren't getting laid in the same vicinity. You know, they were probably well, you know. I, I bet obvious... he's Stein at this time. He has he's not focused oh, on yeah. and That's probably true. used to used to feeling Jack's uh, feelings and stuff. So right now he's not focused on it. He's focused on his his newborn baby system, grandson yeah. and or you know, his baby and, and his daughter. He's not focused on that. Yeah. So he and he's probably used to it's kinda of like one of those things, you know, your mom and the kid, they talk to you and you're like, what? Were you, were you talking to me? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, was I supposed to be listening? Because <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, it's like when, you know, the toddler is smashing toys on the ground or, you know, whatever. The parent you don't hear. just, yeah, you start not hearing that stuff, which is bad and good at the same time. But yeah, yeah. no, I just I I just couldn't understand, like the way that Jax was explaining is that they have such a strong connection. I think even if he was preoccupied with his family, that he would even be he'd be able to feel like tinglings of things happening. Cause I don't know. I just I think his. From what even Jack said, that his that Stein's emotions about his daughter and his grand his grandchild were so overwhelming to him. Yeah. Right. So it would probably you know was his his emotions were overlapping and kind okay. of going ah oh, yeah you don't need you know no, we don't need to feel that you know kind of thing. They're there, but they weren't as bad as his. So I mean, it, I think it it was overpowering. Yeah. And Jackson just knew and it. it he might, I mean, there might have been, Stein might have been like, oh, something's wrong. Eh, no, no, I'm not ready for it. It, it was <laughs> interfering with Jax. I, I just yeah. love Jax. Is like, wait, I don't have a craving for grapefruit? <laughs> <laughs> the grapefruit thing was interesting. Like, yeah. I mean, he ended up trying it in the end. You know, being like, yeah, it's not so bad. It's a little tart. But, mm. like, not, uh, uh, grapefruit. Uh. I honestly haven't had, like, an actual real grapefruit since I was little, so I don't even know anymore. I like grapefruit juice. I don't like the actual grapefruit. Well, you don't like the texture. Yeah, that's probably my, my problem with it. You don't like a lot of things that isn't chicken. That's nuggets. true. That's true. <laughs> I don't like chicken, chicken nuggets. I don't ever eat nuggets. Chicken strips. There we go. But, uh... Yeah, well, Stein finds out. He's, he's clearly not too happy about it, but it, it seems like he's more upset that it was done behind his back without... You know, talking yeah. to him. Yeah. And later on, he does apologize to Jax. He's like, I didn't realize everything I was going through was bleeding over and affecting you. Like, you were feeling the whole, the emptiness inside of the family and all that. So, in the end, you know, it seems like he wants to help. So. So, the plan is to make Jax Firestorm. Just, that's it. He's not going to have find another person as a component. They're just going to make him solid. I mean, if they so if just... they could, I mean, that would be really awesome because then he wouldn't have to, re, you know, rely so, on someone else. Do you think, do you think he's going to yell flame on every time no. he transforms? He's no. not Johnny Storm. No. <laughs> no. I mean, they have been referencing Marvel the last few, like, episodes of these DC yeah. shows. Why not? You know, throw he'll, that he'll probably say fun. something that isn't copyrighted, like "fire on" or uh, "flame up" or something. Yeah, that, something that sounds like similar. your hemorrhoids are flaring up. But you know, whatever. Now, <laughs> um, 
next episode, and I don't want to get Nikki too excited, we may get a preview of Grodd in next episode, but we're definitely getting Grodd in episode 7. Okay. Okay. Uh, episode 7, not the next one. The next one is episode 6, but episode yeah. 7 is Welcome to the Jungle. That's Grodd's episode. Yeah. Um, and we're going to okay. go back to, like, Vietnam War kind of, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Oh, that is guerrilla warfare. Yeah. Ha, 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 Oh, my hmm. God. I so we may, we may get a preview of him in, in this next uh, coming episode. So, <laughs> yeah, Red Band says that yeah, only Nate would yell flame on. Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> episode six uh, is called Helen Hunt. Um when the legends track down an uh, anachronism from the 1930s uh, in Hollywood, they discover it's none other than a time-displaced Helen of Troy, and she's just started a war between two film studios. Uh, oh, what, MGM? And... <laughs> as the legends try to fix history and return Helen to the Bronze Age, things get complicated when they are blindsided by the appearance of a former enemy. Sarah contemplates an offer she has made which would make the legends leave the anachronisms be. Meanwhile, Stein and Jax find themselves in an unusual predicament. Should be interesting. Huh. You know what I would find as a predicament a, pre a predicament for shut up, for Jax and Stein is if when they went to combine that Jax would be the mind in the back and Stein would be the one controlling the flames. He's never done that before. Could That'd you be imagine? Hilarious. He'd just be like, whoa, what am I doing? And flying all over the place and not being able to shoot the fire. I think that more would be reversal. interesting. Uh, yeah, well, I think what would be, what would be more interesting is if it made Stein the sole firestorm and Jax got free and they, they have to figure out how to reverse that. That would be... Because that's, that's I, not I, what they're, I, they're, they did at all, you know? I don't think that'd be unusual. I think that would be a tra like a tragic predicament <laughs> for them. <laughs> this is not what I want! This is really not what I want! No! So. Okay. I'm, I'm curious who these, uh, this villain from the past could be, if, if it's dark. Because uh, this, this might have been written up so future people didn't know the dark was coming in this particular episode because usually synopsises are done two episodes ahead mm -hmm. so they might have just did that to not spoil damien dark's return i don't know but i don't know so what's his name is back i don't feel Corey like they... found on aruba oh so red bandit says this is going to be the body switching episode for jack and Stein. i did hear we were going to get something like that so this so this unusual, right. this unusual predicament is uh, that Lindsay Lohan movie, the remake. Freaky, Freaky Friday. Friday. That one, yeah. 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 Okay, so I was kind of right. It's just that they went full on switch, where I was just thinking of when they went Firestorm. Mm. All right, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, that may apply to Firestorm as well. <laughs> oh my god, can't wait! I want to see that. So, all right, that does it for this episode. Nikki, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter at LadyVenom24 L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M 24 uh, Rachel where can the people find you? Ah right there at VikingWitch76 on uh, Twitter and VikingWitch on Twitch and you can find me down below at Phenomenon P-H-E-N-O-M-E-D-O-M -E -E and you can find us all and more on Facebook Gmail G+, Twitter Space <laughs> And right here on YouTube and Twitch at slash ASO TV podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Till next time. See you guys later. Rod. Woo. Soon. <laughs> Great babe. Gorilla warfare. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs>